today we're going to show you how to fit kitchen units. If you've made a detailed plan of your kitchen and ordered all the correct size units, then you should be able to install them with a minimum of fuss. Carefully open the pack and check you've got all the fixings stated in the instructions before assembling. If there's anything missing, contact the B&Q advice line or take it back to the store. Read the instructions and then read them again. Understanding all the instructions will give you the confidence to put everything together. Use the cardboard packaging as a surface to protect the finish of the units while you're assembling them. With the instructions we have here, we're going to follow them through and put the unit together. Take your time and check that the unit is square. Attach the legs to the base, then screw on the adjustable feet. Once you've assembled your units, you're ready to start fixing them to the walls. Before you start, it's important that you know how and where to isolate the electric, water and gas supplies as a precaution, just in case you hit a pipe or a cable when you're fitting the units. You should also have a pipe and cable detector like this to hand. There is much less risk of hitting a pipe or a cable if you use one of these. If your design and layout includes a tool unit such as a larder, tool oven housing or a fridge freezer unit, it's best to fit this first because you'll need to line up the top of the wall units with any of the tool units. Where possible, fit wall units before you fit base units. That way you won't be stretching over the base units to fit the wall units. Use a spirit level and a pencil to mark a horizontal guideline for the bottom edge of the wall units. Measuring up from the top of the base cabinets, allowing for the worktop. Then mark another guideline for the top of the units. Then, following your plan, draw vertical guidelines where each unit will meet. If you can't quite reach, use a stepladder when marking the guidelines, but don't overstretch or use a stool or a chair. Next, we need to make sure the position of each unit is correct and is at a safe distance away from things like hobs. Follow the unit manufacturer's guidance. Before we go any further, we need to check an area behind the units for pipes and cables. Mark the position of any pipes and cables as you find them. If the wall is a plasterboard stud partition wall, you should also find and mark the position of the vertical stud timbers. You can either use a stud detector or you can tap the wall gently with your knuckle. Moving sideways, you will hear a slightly different sound when a stud is located. Once you have located the first stud, you can check its position by tapping a nail through the plasterboard behind where the units will be fixed until it hits the stud. Do this to find each side of the stud. Stud timbers are normally 40mm to 50mm wide. Make sure that you don't bang a nail into an area that you have marked as containing a pipe or a cable. You can then repeat this process to find and mark the remaining studs. Standard practice is for studs to be spaced 400mm apart, but the actual spacing may vary. If you only make holes in the area behind where the units are to be fitted, you won't need to fill in the holes. The next job is to position and fix the wall fixing brackets. Each cabinet needs two, one in each top corner. The last thing you want is for your units to fall down, so follow the manufacturer's instructions to the letter when fixing the brackets. Hold each bracket in place and mark the position of the fixing holes, then fix according to the type of wall. If you can't quite reach, use a stepladder. If you have solid plaster walls, then use a power drill with hammer action and a masonry drill bit to drill the holes. Make sure that the drill bit is the correct diameter for the wall plugs that you'll be using. Don't drill holes any deeper than is necessary. Once the holes are drilled, you can insert the wall plugs and then fix the brackets using the screws provided. If the screws don't tighten securely, you may need to drill deeper holes and use longer screws in order to achieve a really secure fixing. If you have plasterboard stub partition walls, use hollow wall fixings to secure the brackets. Additional fixings may also be required. We'll explain what is needed after we have shown you how to hang the units. Hook each wall unit onto its brackets, then use the adjustment blocks inside the units to position the unit accurately. Lay a spirit level across the top of the cabinet and turn one screw to level horizontally. Then position the level against the front face and adjust the other screw until the front face is vertical. Also, check the units are level with each other. For safety, you must add extra fixings to wall units that are fixed to plasterboard stud partition walls. Hang the cabinet on the brackets and adjust as we have just shown. Then unhook the unit and pack out the cavity between the back of the unit and the wall with timber. Make a note of the position of the studs and rehang the unit and drill right through 
the back of the unit and packing where the studs are located. Then make an additional fixing directly into the stud. At least two additional fixings per unit are required. Once the units are fixed to the wall, any adjoining units should be fixed together. First, clamp the units, then use a 3mm twist bit to drill between the two hinge holes through one cabinet and 4mm into the next. Use the 25mm screws supplied. Now you can put the shelves in. Decide which height you want each one at and simply push the shelf supports into the pre-drilled holes and slide them into place. Next we need to fit the base units that we assembled earlier. Using the spirit level, mark a horizontal guideline on the walls level with where the top of the units will be, aligning them with existing appliances. Remember to allow for the unit's legs and plinths if one is to be fitted when working out the height. If a corner unit like this is included in the design, it needs to be fitted first. Fitting a corner unit with interior storage such as a pull and swing or a kidney unit can be a great way of maximizing your space. Move the unit into position and then rotate the legs to adjust the height until it aligns with the pencil guideline on the wall. Use a spirit level to check the unit is level. Don't drag base units across the floor, you could damage the legs, always lift them into position. Base units are bulky and heavy so get someone to help you when you're lifting and handling the units. The base units can now be fixed to the wall using an L shaped bracket on each side. Check for pipes and cables as before. Mark the position of the brackets and the fixing holes. On solid walls, drill the wall using a masonry drill bit and use wall plugs and screws. On plaster stud partition walls, use hollow wall fixings. To fix the owl bracket to the unit, drill a pilot hole into the unit or use a bradle to make a hole and secure the bracket with a 15mm screw. Any other units can be fitted in a similar way, but remember that adjoining units will also need to be fitted together before they are fixed to the wall. Once all the units are fixed in place, any base unit end panels can be fitted. So that's all your units built and installed. The next job is to fit the doors and the handles. To find out how to do that, Watch our film on how to fit kitchen unit doors and handles. For more ideas and know-how, visit DIY.com.